And the, um, the next thing we're going to talk about is motion in the galaxy. So this is going to help us understand um, how, how spiral arms in our galaxy form and how they persist over time. So um, in order to measure stellar motion, um, what do you think we could do? What are some ideas that you have for how we might measure the motion of stuff, either stars or gas in our galaxy? All right, lots of good ideas out there. So the one that I had in mind was Doppler shift um, for stars in particular. So last time we talked about um, the black body spectra of stars and how the Doppler shift causes the entire spectrum to move um, either to the red if the star is moving away from us or to the blue if the star is moving toward us. So we can do that if we take the spectrum of different stars and then look for the Doppler shift, then we can figure out which direction um, that star is moving with respect to us and how fast. Um, for gas, we can actually do something similar, but since we can't use the visible spectra um, of the gas, we're going to use the 21 centimeter radio emissions instead. So for example, here's the Triangulum Galaxy again in the visible, and now um, this particular image is 21 centimeter radio showing the red shift and the blue shift of different parts of the galaxy. So my question for you is, um, based on the how the redshift and blue shift are located on the triangulum, is the top of it approaching us or receding from us? Um, so the top is blue shifting, um, just uh, in the chat, I guess. Does that mean that the wavelength is getting squashed or getting stretched? Yep, so our wavelength is getting squashed if we have a blue shift. And that means that the that particular part of that source is moving toward us. All right, so the blue shift up here means that that part of the triangulum galaxy is approaching us, whereas the bottom is receding from us. So this is how we can figure out the um, motion of gas within our galaxy is by using uh, measurements of the red shift or blue shift of that 21 centimeter radiation wavelength. All right, so for stars, we've got our Doppler shift of the entire stellar spectrum. And for our gas, we have the Doppler shift of this 21 centimeter emission line. So in this particular graph, this source is shifted to a longer wavelength that's getting stretched. So that's gas that is moving away from us. So this is the basic um, way that we can map out the motion of all the stuff in our Milky Way's disk. All right, so um, the Milky Way is a large and rotating object. And so I want to talk a little bit about rotation. So what I've got here is imagine this is like a turntable with a record on it. And you've got two ladybugs that are sitting on different parts of the record. Um, what happens as the turntable rotates? So remember our, our ladybugs, if we assume that they're not walking around on the record, then they're pretty much fixed in place, right? And so if I was going to rotate the entire record by a certain amount and they're not moving with respect to the surface of that record, then they would have to stay in line with each other. The entire record is moving as a single solid body. It's like if I, um, you know, if I have a bike wheel, a spoke connects the center to the rim of the bike wheel, right? And the no part of the spoke lags behind. Otherwise, the wheel of your bicycle would be destroyed as you rode. Okay, so for a rigid body, this is what we call a rigid body where all the pieces are connected. This is how rotation works. As the body rotates, anything um, that is you know, on a radial line connecting the center to the edge stays in line as that object rotates. Um, but maybe because you did the reading, um, you already know what happens for stars. Um, so let's say that instead of ladybugs on a record player, now this is my spiral galaxy, the Milky Way, and I have an inner star and an outer star. Um, now, how do they relate to each other as the galaxy rotates? So I see a majority, not 100%, but a majority of votes for C, that that outer star is actually going to lag behind the inner star. And that's exactly right. Um, so what this means is that um, stars near the center of the galaxy, they're orbiting faster, and stars that are orbiting farther from galactic center are orbiting slower. Um, this is just a consequence of gravity and orbits, which we'll talk about next week, um, but it, what it means is that the galaxy is not a rigid body. 
it's not like all the stars are painted on the surface of a frisbee and you could toss that frisbee and they would stay aligned with each other as they, you know, as the frisbee rotated. It's not like that. Instead, all of the stars and the gas um, is orbiting around galactic center. And so they don't stay aligned with each other as they rotate around. So outer stars lag behind and move slower. 